Alright. Alright, I think we're working. Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. And welcome to another live stream here at EP3D Studios. I'm your host, Matthew, and my producer wife is currently out of town at her mother's house um, with our little one. So this is a solo show. So I've got, uh, I've got the switcher and I got another laptop here to check out the chat and all that fun stuff. Um, so this is going to be more of a, um, a low key kind of haphazard. I don't know what you want to call it stream. Um, but I did, uh, put out a poll last week for what you all wanted to see for this week's stream. And um, I know last week we talked about doing some conversations about sci-fi stuff, which great, let's talk about some sci-fi. Um, but the main point, um, the, the main topic, uh, SolidWorks tutorial won the poll. So today is going to be SolidWorks and sci-fi. What's going on, Ricardo? Uh, I'm doing very well today. Um, I hope you're doing great. Um, like I said, this is going to be um, just a chill stream. And part of that is I have, uh, I have something to 3D print as well. So this, this is still 3D printing related. Um, what's going on, Ray? Glad to have you here, bud. Um, where was I? Yes, this still is about 3D printing and sci-fi and SolidWorks. This, this is going to be a crazy show. Um, but I have my Two Trees SP5 up and running. Um, oh, man, I forgot to get those pictures up. I rebrained it and rewired a bunch of it and put Clipper firmware on it and all that fun stuff. I had it running Clipper with a Sonic pad um, doing some testing, and it, you know Clipper runs fine on it. Um, but I wanted a standalone deal, so I got a the Big Tree Tech Pi and a screen and stuff like that. So that's how that is going. And if I'm staring over into this area, all my tech stuff is over here. And I'm, I haven't done live editing in years. So trying to live edit and run the stream is going to be uh, a challenge. So apologize in advance for any weirdness when it comes to that. Um, but I do have, let's see, camera, what, three is the, no, camera one is the printer. So check it out. Ha, printer shot. Boom, cool. Ian Brown, 2575. Hey, how are you? I hope you're doing well. <laughs> Even from 400 miles away, I can make sure you all give him a tough time tonight. Yes. Yes, she will. That is Ian Brown, 2575, is my producer wife, and she is a couple of states, well, technically one state away. She could, on a clear day, she could see California from her mom's yard, which is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, they're, they're a ways out having a little vacation time slash work on the farm time. So solo show, but, uh, first things first is I got a print to get started that you guys could watch go. Um, maybe I know Ed, the old tech guy wanted to see something we had chatted a while ago. So maybe we'll wait on that and get into this, um, before we start on that. Kyle Boaz, finally not working for a live stream. Excellent, man. Glad to see that you have some time off and you can come come join this, um, uh, I don't know what to call it, disaster. <laughs> um, but yeah, welcome, Kyle. Glad to have you here. Uh, we're going to learn some SolidWorks today. I actually haven't even thought about what I want to draw, which is silly. Because I did some stuff yesterday making parts for the printer, and I guess I could have shown, I don't know. Um, give me some ideas, folks. What do you want to learn to draw in SolidWorks? Um, but outside of that, let's talk sci-fi. What is everyone's favorite sci-fi show of all time? and what makes it your favorite. That's what we're gonna go with. We're gonna ask those kind of questions. Um, but, um, 
yeah, let's get let's get into this SolidWorks thing. So let's see, I gotta go over here and do picture in picture stuff. Figured out how to change the deal for that. So camera two is gonna be that. And then we're gonna go to camera three. Yeah. Get a little ah, right, there we go. That's how she does it, huh? She's so smart. <laughs> so here we are. Uh, give me a drink here. Uh, in SolidWorks, and we're just going to start something new and go over just the basics. If you've just gotten it or you want to get it and you want to see how it works, how it compares to, say, like Fusion 360, which is the most popular, um, like, 3D CAD that, um, like, hobbyists and stuff use because there's a free license for it, although very limited, um, but still very functional and you could do a lot with it. This is subscription-based, but it's very inexpensive um, for what you're getting, um, even if it wasn't half as good as this, it would still be considered inexpensive in my book. So, and I have a link in the video description where you can get it and you can subscribe to it for like $10 a month or you can pay $100 for a year and you get full SolidWorks Professional for Makers. Uh, let's see here. Hey, Ed the Old Tech Guy. Welcome, Ed the Old Tech Guy. Glad to have you here. Uh, I got something queued up for you to watch on the machine here. Yes, I did just give you a compliment. Emily, I did. Um, so, Ed, I know we talked about a Starfleet Command trophy. That's going to take a while to print. I still have it. I'm going to print it for you, but I, I found something smaller as well that can print in about the time that the stream will take, maybe a little longer, but we can at least get it started and you can see it start to run. Well, all of you can see it start to run. So, since you're here, let's get started on that. Let's go back. Let's see where. Let's go to where I slice it here. I have it kind of ready to go here. It's just this. Um, Sorry if I'm moving it kind of fast. Starfleet Command, like coaster, like cup coaster. That's a fun one. So I've already got it all set up. So we're gonna slice her up here. And it says one hour and 11 minutes. So it, we, we might go a little long. We'll see what, what the chat feels. Um, <laughs> and then we're gonna go over to print and upload. And it's gonna push it over to the printer. Nice and slow. Hmm. Uh, while we wait for anybody that has joined recently um, in the last few minutes, question of the day, what's your favorite sci-fi show and what makes it your favorite? It could be a movie as well or a movie series. So um, I think my favorite sci-fi movie series, obviously Star Wars, the old ones. Um, Although some of the newer stuff that Disney's doing is okay. The, the, what was it, the, um, I can't forget the brain fart. The Obi-Wan, the Obi-Wan thing was, was really good. And they had Ewan McGregor do it too. So it's like keeping the same actors, sort of. That was a really good one. And, and of course, um, Mandalorian's awesome. Um, so, and, and then, Favorite sci-fi show that I've watched has got to be The Expanse. It's so good. I wish they had, they had gone more than five seasons, but they did kind of end it well, so got to leave it there. Oh, we're all sliced up. Ed, the old tech guy, says, a Wookiee and a Vulcan walk into a bar. Oh, no. The Wookiee says, Arr! and the Vulcan says illogical words, then tears his arms off and says, ah, ha, ha, the Vulcan the Vulcan before passing out. Now that's highly illogical. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Ed, the jokes. I like it. All right. Ed, we got this uploaded here, so we're going to go over to device. Here's our printer. Find our file. Start Fleet Insignia Coaster. Print. And uh, I'm going to run. We're going to go over to camera one real quick. All right, that's our printer, print. And it's gonna heat up here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the machine's gotta heat up first. That's gonna take a minute. So we'll go back to, I guess, me. Is that how that works? Hey, fancy. Ray, the original Battlestar Galactica isn't my favorite, but it has a special place in my heart. Yes, it's been a long time since I've seen any of those, like years. I kind of don't even remember them. Maybe I should go through and try to watch them again. 
remember them being good. Um, God, what other good shows were there? There are some good older ones. Obviously, I mean, would Doctor Who fall in the category of sci-fi? I think that's definitely sci-fi. I'm going to put it in sci-fi, which is a great show up until maybe a few seasons ago. Then it got kind of meh. So I think ever since um, when Matt Smith um, stopped being the Doctor is when it kind of went downhill. Um, printer is heating up here. Boy, them 24 volt heated build plates take forever to heat up. Yes, Ed, yes. If you're referring to Doctor Who, then yes. Yes, I agree. Great sci fi show. Mm, and then for uh, Farscape was awesome. If you've never seen Farscape, watch that. And then there was another one. Uh, I don't remember the name of it. Let's see. Doctor Who is one of my favorites, says Ed. Yes. Ray, I have a TARDIS and a couple of Sonic screwdrivers as well as some Daleks. So, yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's something I could 3D print a Dalek. That'd be fun. Um, and a TARDIS model would be a lot of fun, too. Be great. One of the first things I printed was a silver TARDIS from Monopoly. <gasps> That's a good Monopoly piece. That's a good idea, Ray. You're a genius. Let me ever tell you that, Ray, you're a genius? I like it. Oh, 3D printer still heating up. On a, on a side note for this 3D printer, I basically just got it back up and running a couple hours ago. So it's, uh, it's working. It's not perfect, but it's working. Let's see, Ed says, I have a signed Matt Smith picture and Tom Baker signed picture too. Ooh, Ed, I'm jealous. I am jealous. It's, it's, it's a hard choice between Matt Smith and David Tennant, who the best doctor was. They're both the best doctor in their own right. I do have to give him that. So... Emily says, nice, Ray. I want Monopoly stuff printed. Yes. Emily, we could print some Monopoly stuff. I think I have some silver something or other PLA in there somewhere. Maybe we'll find some, like, really bright, like, chrome silver PLA. That'd be really cool. Oh, printer's going to printer's gonna print. Ed says, once I get my 3D printer, I want to make a full chessboard of characters. That would be cool. Now, what would the character, like, who would be the pawns, who would be the queen, etc.? Ed, let us know that. So, uh, we are almost, we are almost to temperature here. And then we'll get on to... Um, I still can't think of what, what we want to draw in SolidWorks. You guys have any ideas for what you want to learn in SOLIDWORKS as we do this. Um, it's not going to be very formal. This is a very informal setting that we've got going on. Emily makes it formal. She, she makes this a professional operation. I make it a very amateur hour. Kyle Bose says, black with metallic gold sparkles. Find that for me, Kyle, and, and we'll get it. Let's see. Divorce would be an awesome king. Yeah, that would be. Torchwood, that was the show. Yes, Emily. Ooh, printers printing stuff. So uh, what camera is that? One. Hey, look at it go, Ed. This is for you, Ed. You suggested this. So I was chatting with Ed, I think, yesterday, and he, said, he suggested getting a camera view of the printer printing stuff. And I don't know why I didn't think of that. That's a good idea, Ed. So we'll go... We'll periodically check on this. We'll watch it put down the first layer here. Um, let's see, did it do? Yes. It makes all the good noises. Um, hopefully the fan noise from it isn't too bad. Um, it, it used to be louder. 
it had these two really obnoxious tiny fans in it, and the only way they could push any air is they had to run it F1 RPMs, and they were noisy. So I got a big 120 millimeter fan and stuck it in there, and it's still noisy, but not as bad. So until those little hot end fans go on in, it's kind of noisy. So, uh, let's see, add the old tech. I was thinking Marvel versus DC or Star Trek versus Star Wars or X Men versus Avengers. That would be a super cool chessboard, Ed. That is an amazing idea. Hmm, I might have to steal that. <laughs> That's a really good idea. Uh, Ray says, Can you use SolidWorks to model a Rubik's Cube mount slash holder? You may have missed that earlier. Yes, I can do that. Do you want it? I have a couple cubes here. Sitting up like at an angle. Like how, how do you want it to orient the cube, Ray? Tell me. Ooh, first layer going down good. And hopefully it's in focus good enough. I have it manually focused. I have a, the camera's like right here and I have it a long lens. So it's 210 millimeters right now. So the uh, depth of field is super narrow. So part of this will be out of focus. I hopefully have it focused in the middle. I'm watching it on the screen. I should be watching you guys, not the screen. Emily always, um, she gets on me for that. So, but we can switch over. Let's see, uh, camera, what is camera three? Three is uh, what works. Kaboom. And then there. Keep that picture in picture going. Do you guys want the picture in picture to be the printer while I do this? Let me know. Um, and Ray, or Ed says, yeah, that's pretty cool. It is fun. And then Ray says, add an angle to really show it off. Okay, we could do something like that. Um, let's hop in here and just start a new, uh, new project. And we're going to do a millimetric part. So, um, and for those of you who aren't super familiar with what SolidWorks is, it is a parametric 3D design software. Um, and parametric just means that you're using, basically just using um, constraints, references, and dimensions to drive your geometry. So if you've ever done like traditional CAD, like AutoCAD for architecture and stuff like that, the geometry is what drives the dimensions. It's the exact opposite for SolidWorks, which gives you a little bit more control the geometry using equations and global presets and parameters and stuff like that. There's a ton to it. And, um, yeah. So let's, uh, how do we want to, I think doing something like that. I mean, I've seen little holders that people make. Um, first let's get a quick sketch of a cube. Yeah, get an idea of what we got going on here. So how you do things in SolidWorks, oh God, I remember this is a tutorial. Um, you have sketches and features. So you, you do a sketch on a plane and you do features based upon that sketch. So the sketch is your reference for your feature, whether it be an extrusion or revolve or some other type of geometry. Um, let's see, Ed says, it's hypnotic to watch the printer go watching back and forth. Uh, yeah. Okay, so how about this? I will. Let's come over here. Change. Let's turn. Oh, we'll change this to camera one. There you go, Ed. Can you see that picture in picture? And we can go back and forth if you want to. Um, but we're going to kind of get an idea of what this cube is going to look like. It's a 50, well, this is 55 millimeters, but most of them are between 54 and 56 millimeters. Um, I want to do this. Yeah, I got an idea. Okay, so we're going to start by kind of sketching a cube. Yeah, we'll do center. Actually, no. We're going to do a corner rectangle. And I'll show you how, how the dimensions drive the geometry. So we're going to do 55 times 55. So check. All right. So this dimension is what's going to drive the size of this square. 
Um, and there's also some references. These are going to be 90 degrees from each other. And it's saying that it's each side is the same length, so you don't need two dimensions. So depending on what feature you draw or what sketch feature you draw, it depends on automatic constraints added to them, be it parallelism to other lines and stuff like that. So if I want to make it bigger, change the dimension size to 56, it will grow a little bit. Boom. Uh, I need a sketch, but we're going to do 55. Exit. Let's see. I won't say, Emily says, I won't say for sure that I have caught Matt staring at his printer watching it go, but, oh yeah, I definitely have just been like <laughs> hypnotized by it going. Um, so, and hopefully you, it's not too loud. It's behind me. Let's see, look at my sound here. Yeah, it's not too bad. Okay, now we need another plane. So we need to draw a sketch using this line as a plane reference. We're actually going to use this. So reference geometry plane. Boom. So that's going to create a, um, a reference plane to use. Ooh, she's going now. Let's check that out. Uh, camera one. Look at it go. So the nice thing about running Clipper firmware on it is you can go kind of fast and it's pretty nice. Fun. Uh, let's see, back to here. Get that picture in picture on, all right. So now we are going to make another sketch on plane one and we're gonna do the same thing. 55, 55, boom. Exit sketch. All right, we're gonna hide that plane here. So we have two sides of a cube. I just need three sides of a cube. So do we have, ah, there we go. We're gonna use that plane. And now we could use so I did not give it a dimension, so this can be drug around. So I'm going to use the other sketches to drive this. And make coincident. Ugh. Boom, there we go. Hmm. Oh, I have to turn it into a reference. Done. Now. We can do that. There. All right, we have the bottom half of a cube. So now what I want to do is I want to use these three points as a reference for a new plane. Get my bearings here. Yeah. And boom. All right, so it's just a plane kind of cutting the uh, cube. If, oh, you can't see. Uh, yeah. Uh, what do we got going on here? I am off to do my part in the world to cause some mayhem elsewhere. See you all later. See you later, Emily. I love you. Have fun and stay warm. Um, oh, she's moving. All right. Back to here. So now on plane two, we could draw a sketch and we could use these lines as reference lines for our edges. So we will do a, a triangle. Can this thing do, oh, you know what? I, what kind of shapes can we do? Perimeters three, yeah. Oh, look at that. So we gotta give that a dimension. Let's see dimension. We're gonna, how how wide should we make that? Uh, 
we'll say 35 millimeters. Maybe 30. 32, we're just gonna go 32. All right, now we are still undefined. Let's see, normal two. What is making this undefined? I'm thinking it, yeah. So we need to tell it to reference these lines here. Pierce, nope. Sometimes you gotta tinker around with some of these references too. Coincident, that's what we need, just simple. All right, now it's turned the whole sketch black. That means it's fully defined. It can't be changed or moved. And a reason why you wanna fully define all your sketches is that if it can change, it, you could potentially break your entire part model if you accidentally change a dimension or do something that affects the sketch. So you wanna make sure you, all your sketches are fully defined. Exit sketch, all right. I'm gonna hide that. All right, so now, how do I wanna do this? Hmm, just a simple stand, huh? Ray, what do I do here? I'm trying to think, actually I have a, Speaking of sci-fi, go back to camera two. Ha, speaking of sci-fi, I have my super awesome sci-fi mouse that Emily got me for Christmas last year. It's called the Space Mouse Enterprise, which is a very uh, appropriate name for it. It's uh, how you control in SolidWorks and other programs. It's a lot of fun and it makes, makes working nice. Yeah. Oh, it's going to take a minute to get used to this again. I haven't used it in a while. Uh, three auto. Is that where we were at? And then picture in picture. All right. Oh, boy. I think what I'm going to do... plane is that? Use that plane again. Edit feature. No, no. I don't want to change it. I want to sketch on again and use these lines as references. So create reference geometry. You know, all this is is um, convert entity. So you can convert other lines and, and features into two-dimensional sketch lines. Uh oh. It says here that we're having issues with the connection. Let me know if you guys are still seeing this okay. Let's see. <laughs> Ray says that's a mighty nice mouse. Thank you, Ray. I like it. It's a lot of fun. Okay. You can do all sorts of fun with it. Let's offset those. We're going to make this sucker uh, two and a half millimeters thick. Boom. There we go. Now we are going to do our first, um, oh, I could actually make, ooh. Okay, I can make this fancy. I can make this fancy. I just had an idea, plain. Uh, da -da -da -da. We're gonna, Flip the offset, and the sucker is going to be an inch tall. 30 millimeters, how? Inch and a half. Uh, we'll go 1.5 inches. Yeah. And then sketch. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this and just make it bigger. So offset entities, and we're gonna have it draft out 15 millimeters. Perfect. And we're gonna do that again at 2.5. And I 
nice. Exit sketch. So we've got a whole lot of sketches here, nothing going on, but we're, we're getting there. We're gonna make we're gonna make some stuff happen. Let's let's hide some of this stuff that we don't need to show anymore. And hide that. There we go. So now we're just gonna loft this along. Uh, select a region. No. Close loop. Oh, this is getting annoying. Sometimes the loft feature can be problematic. And we're going to go down to here. Why is it doing a surface law? I think we want closed loop or region. Region. No, okay, come on. I'm making myself out to be an idiot here. I can't get this to work right. Why is this not working, Ray? Why is this not working, Ray? This is all your fault. Huh. What is going on? Open loop. Closed loop. I want a closed loop. There we go. All right, there it is. And we're just gonna make it a thin feature. Two and a half millimeters. Inside, there. And we're gonna get fancy with it. Start in constraints, normal to profile. Normal to profile. There we go. That's fun. And actually, we're going to take off the... Yeah. All right. And we have a Rubik's Cube stand. Why is there shade? We don't want shade. It's a simple cube stand that it will just sit and plop in there. <laughs> Ray, you think you broke it? Yeah, sometimes the loft feature can be a little bit weird. It's it's a very powerful feature, so um, yeah, we'll go back to here. The loft feature is a very powerful feature, which there's options you could do with it that could sometimes make it difficult. Um, and a lot of it's like selecting your geometry. So I was just trying to be too complicated with it and loft a in a, a contour like an enclosed contour when all I really needed was just a, a shape and do a thin feature, which you saw me do, I figured that out. So sometimes for certain things, you gotta think of it more simply. So, and that's what I did. Kyle, welcome to me and SolidWorks. Oh, now what it's telling me is, well now what is it telling me what is wrong? Yeah, so it's a learning process. Um, I don't use the loft very much, but just for what I saw in my brain, what I wanted this to look like, the loft was the right feature. Um, so, um, Kyle, what do you want to know since you're here and you use SolidWorks and you're learning? Same with you, Ray. What do you want to know? Also, Kyle, what's your favorite um, sci-fi show? You never answered. I don't think so. I don't, I don't see an answer here. English is hard. You know, Kyle, I get it. English is hard even if I get enough sleep. So don't, don't beat yourself up. How's this looking? Oh, it's doing stuff. It's printing. You know what I didn't do? Change the pressure. Oh. Make sure our pressure advance is set correctly. Um, 
Yeah. And then if I want to 3D print this, which I think I will, because this is kind of cool. I like it. Oh, let's add a little bit more detail though. Let's, let's give the corners, the edges, some radiuses. Two millimeters, yeah. Excellent. And then, see, will it let me chamfer this? No. Cancel. I want chamfer. One. Let's see, will it let me do it on this sharp turn? It does. And we're going to do a two millimeter chamfer. I'll do all these edges. So the cube sits in there nice and snug. Oh man. That's nice. And let's add a little one millimeter fillet around the top edge. Excellent. I have my space mouse. What am I doing? Oh, fancy, fancy. I'm going to print this tonight. Let's see. Oh, Stranger Things. Yeah. I would consider Stranger Things sci-fi. Definitely. Um, it's very strange. Um, it's a good show, though. See, Ray at Kyle, have you read any of the comic books from the Umbrella Academy? Oh, I heard those were good. I heard those were good. I never read any. I'm not much of a reader, so take it for what it's worth. Um, <coughs> excuse me. All right. So this looks good. Maybe I'll add a little bit of a base to this, though. So we could use any flat surface as a sketch plane. And then I'm going to use these edges here as reference. So you go convert entities and select all these edges. And bam, we have lines. And we're going to offset those 10 millimetrics. And we're going to change the direction here. No, not bi-directional. Reverse. Boom and give it a little sketch fillet uh five mils excellent exit sketch and we're going to do a simple extrusion and it already knows the profile we want and we're going to make it two and a half millimeters and then make sure it's not oh yeah it's fine that's perfect Now I can give this a little fillet in here. Uh, two mil. Let's see what that cause issue. Let's see what that looks like real quick. Mm, yeah, that'll work. Feature. Uh huh. Those look good. And everything needs a rate. Everything needs a fillet or a chamfer, a chamfer everything. Um, one, it looks nice, and two, it helps with actually structure. When you have sharp inside corners like this, I mean, obviously this isn't gonna be a functional mechanical part. It's holding up a cube that weighs like 50 grams. Um, oh man, I'm, I'm on the wrong camera. I'm sorry, guys. Ha! Uh, what a silly show I'm running here. There, I'm back. We're back with the SolidWorks. Uh, so if, if, in case you missed it, I added a base. I'm doing some radiuses and some finish work. And I was saying the reason why you want to do fillets and chamfers is um, not only because it looks nice, but for structure. Uh, having a sharp inside corner or like this or outside corner is a stress point. So any type of load being pressed on on a functional part obviously this is more than strong enough for holding up a cube 
Um, but for other functional parts, all that stress will get pushed to this very sharp inside corner and that's where it would break if it were to break. So you add fillets and chamfers to mostly inside corners here and that helps spread that stress along the surface. And with 3D prints, the most of the strength in your 3D print is going to be in the shells. Um, so the infill helps, but the shells are most of the strength. So, oh, wow, well, I need to catch up on the chat here. Let's see, did it, did it. Kyle says he has not. Pictures are good though, yes. Drew, Drew, you made it, welcome. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, you're late. It's Canadian Thanksgiving this weekend. Yeah, you had mentioned that earlier. It's Canadian Thanksgiving. Do you guys do Thanksgiving a month, month and a half earlier than us just because it's so cold up there in the end of November? I think that might be why. Uh, Ray says he just had his. Oh, Ray, are you, Ray, are you Canadian? I didn't think you were Canadian. Let's see. What do you all eat up there for the occasion? Hopefully something better than turkey. I still think they have turkey, Kyle. Um, what are those? Is there any, like, hey, Drew, is there any authentic Canadian cuisine that we don't have here in the States? Does, does Canadians actually have their own culture or food, or are they just... I don't know. Canadian culture's weird. <laughs> uh, Drew, you did turkey yesterday? Oh. Holy cow. Mulligan, Mulligitani Sue. I don't know what that is, Drew. I can't even pronounce it. <coughs> uh, ooh, and a recipe. <laughs> glad you, Drew says, you're glad you made it see Blunder Along. As for my instructions from in like, geez, Matt, YouTube much? No, I actually haven't been YouTubing much, and I need to get back into it. So, yeah. Raz away. Moose, Kyle, Moose. I don't know if I don't know if they could. Uh, is moose hunting legal in Canada? I thought that was like like a national animal or something like that. Kind of like here, you can't shoot a bald eagle. <laughs> Be bad. Um, ketchup chips. Oh man, I forgot about ketchup chips. Yeah. So funny story. My very last deployment, um, we would get a lot of like schools and stuff like that do like care packages for the for the troops, and we got a care package from a Canadian elementary school, which was weird. Um, a Canadian elementary school sending an American Air Force squadron a care pack, whatever. But there was a bunch of Lay's ketchup flavored chips in the care package and we thought it was a joke like we literally thought it was a scam like what is this what what are these kids trying to do to us and then we had to look it up like oh this is really a thing in canada um and i gotta say they were not as bad as i expected them to be but still not great um <clears throat> uh let's see drew mulligatani mulligatani that sounds like a, a native term uh -huh. Kevin can't or shouldn't shoot an eagle. A bald eagle, Kevin. You cannot shoot. Well, you shouldn't shoot a bald eagle. And I think it is a crime. You can go to jail for that. And why would you want to? That's just rude, Kevin. Uh, strongly suggested not to. It's a nice way of putting it. <clears throat> All right. Where were we here? So we added some radiuses, blah, 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 blah. And in the bottom, some good old chamfers. So if you're designing a part for 3D printing, you gotta think about how you're going to orient this thing or whatever you're, you're making on your build surface. And I typically don't like to have fillets or radiuses on the build surface because there is a point where the overhang is too steep and it either has to be supported um, or if you don't support it, it looks terrible because it can't make that smooth transition. Um, and then even if supported, it looks bad. Like typically with 3D printing, supporting a curved surface doesn't look good. Supporting flat surfaces is okay. And even angled surfaces is all right. But curved surfaces, 
avoid it at all costs. So when you do your designs, try to design in a matter in which you, you know it can be 3D printed, um, limiting the amount of potential for failure and potential for it looking terrible. Um, and then also for if you're doing functional parts, orient knowing which way the layer lines are going so you have the most strength across your layers. Um, all that fun. Uh, it was a very famous episode of Seinfeld. The Soup Nazi. I remember that. I remember that episode. I don't remember that part, though. But Seinfeld was a great show. I was one of the best shows in the 90s. I loved that show. Um, but back to what I was saying. Um, with surfaces that will be contacting your build plate, instead of a radius or a fillet, do a chamfer. Um, a 45-degree chamfer. Because most any printer worth its salt nowadays can do a 45 degree overhang without issue. So, wow, that is huge. We're going to do one millimeter. There. So you still get a nice, you know, bottom surface with the chamfer. And it's going to still, you know, it's going to print and look good. You don't have to worry about supports. So um, we're going to do a, ra a radius in here. A one millimeter fillet. Oh, that's looking good. Hmm, this is gonna be nice. I might have to make a bunch of these. Let's see. Drew is originally from Nova Scotia. I didn't know you're from Nova Scotia. That's like up by Maine, right? That's like the the east, like southeast Canada, I think, right? If my geography tells me right. Um, yeah, how's this print coming along? What is that, camera one? Let's look at that. Look at it go. Gyroid infill. I guess I could speed up the infill. That's looking kind of slow. Yeah. Back to three with our picture in picture. Let's see, back to the chat. Oh, Drew's asking, what are we making with SolidWorks today? Drew, we are making a stand for a Rubik's Cube. Uh, and this was Ray's suggestion, making a little stand that this thing will sit in. So if you look at... Uh, this here, the cube is going to sit in there at an angle. Just plop and display it. So that was a very good idea from Ray. I like it. So that's what we got going on. Uh, Ray Drew, you a frog too? We're proud frogs in my family. <laughs> is that a uh, French Canadian thing, Ray? Frogs, you call yourselves frogs? Um, I could see that. I think that's the French part of the Canadian. I know um, in, in Louisiana, that area, they, they like frogs. I've had frog legs. It's eh, tastes like chicken. Uh, alligator tail in Missouri tastes like chicken, but better than frog legs. It's like a different kind of chicken. Let's see. Well, then I think you better start practicing. Yes, yes, I have been practicing. I have been practicing. I have a um, <laughs> nerdy thing of the day or next weekend is I'm going to do a speed solving competition. So with both three by three and two by two. So I've been practicing both trying to get my average, you know, around 10 seconds for this little guy and get below a minute for this guy. So that's what I've been practicing. Ray says, a frog is anybody with French ancestry. That makes sense. Yeah. That's what I figured. Set those back here. All right. Maybe I should do like a logo on the sides. That'd be kind of fun. <laughs> yeah. So what if I did... Now... now noise it's making. 
Sometimes it makes funny noises. Uh, we'll go back to camera three. Yeah, back to our picture in picture because you guys can watch it print. You better start juggling like that video. So I can kind of juggle, um, not good at it, but I'm not gonna juggle cubes and try to solve them. No, it's gonna be, take, be too hard to track. I couldn't do that. I mean, I suppose if I practice, but I don't have the time for that. So let's see if I could do a plane and we're gonna use that edge. Current combinations of references and constraints are not valid. Okay, how about that edge? No. No. Huh, okay. Fine. Where do I have a... A... Let's see, this is my front plane. These are all at an angle. What is going on here? Why is this... I've got this thing oriented so, oh, it's because the way I did the cube, yeah. That makes sense. I wanna do like a name on the sides. That's what I wanna do. Do some text here. Let's see, Ray, da da da, you know, with an NS, okay. I saw those cubes and figured you needed at least one stand. Yes, Ray, you figured right. I need lots of stands. I have lots of cubes and I want all the cubes. Um, let's see, Ray, I do my kids actually do with social studies on um, Megdahan in grade two. Okay. You Canadians and your weird words that I don't understand. I mean, I guess technically that's the correct angle. Huh. Oh, so that is not going to work. Oh. We're going to show these planes so I can see what I'm doing here. So I need a plane perpendicular to this one. That uh, sucked. This is a plane perpendicular. Boom. Hmm. And what is my second reference? I don't have a second reference. You're adding all sorts of angles, Ray. Matagan. 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 What is Matagan? I don't know what Matagan is. I'm pretty sure you said something and I just didn't read it. No frogs, blah, 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 blah. I don't know. Oh, here we go. My kids actually did a whole social studies unit on Matagan in grade two. I'm guessing Matagan is like a province or an area or something in Canada. I don't know. This this whole stream's really gone off the rails. I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing here, looking stupid. Like, oh, I'm gonna give you guys a tutorial on SolidWorks because I know what I'm doing. Uh, and I'm like looking like I don't know what I'm doing because I'm confused. In my defense though, I put that thing together, most of it last night, the rest this morning. And man, that was a, tr that was a struggle. Um, I'm having issues so, for any of you that know Clipper really, really well, I'm having serious issues with my start script, not heating the thing up how I'm telling it to. Um, so and that's specifically in Orca Slicer. I'm trying out Orca Slicer because um, we have the Bamboo Lab, it works. We're using Orca Slicer because it integrates with it really well. Um, so, and I like the way that I like what they have going on. So I want to start using Orca Slicer. Now let's go, let's go to me here. There we go. I want to start using Orca Slicer, um, but 
it's a fork of Prusa Slicer, and any Prusa Slicer, clone, Super Slicer, all that I've ever tried has given me trouble with Start G Code or Start Scripts. So I've been an idea maker person for a long time, and I love it. Um, but there are some features in Orca Slicer that I like, um, and I got to get used to using it. So something about Prusa Slicer or Orca Slicer, something about it with Start G Code and Start Scripts. It, I've never had luck with it. It always has given me problems. Um, with this one I'm dealing with, I tell it in the for the filament profile to heat up first layer 230 degrees, and after that go to 210 degrees. And then I have a start script that I took off of the forum, uh, and a friend of mine uses, and he says it works fine, and it has a default temperature of two or 190 and it will heat up to 190 and ignore my first layer temperature and then once it gets to the second layer it heats up to 210 where I have it going so I don't understand why it's ignoring the first layer temperature but recognizing the rest of it I don't get it it's very frustrating so uh, let's see oh it's a village in Nova Scotia okay Lots of fishing in schooners there. I like fishing. And Kyle, it's a perfect stream. Just hanging out and doing cool stuff. Yeah, that's kind of what we're doing. Hanging out and doing cool stuff. Ray says he likes Orca Slicer, but I get stringing in it. I get none in Prusa Slicer. No idea why. Yeah, just little strange nuances between the slicers. Um, I don't have stringing. It's not an issue. It's the dang start scripts um, and supports. The supports in Prusa Slicer slash Orca Slicer. Um, I've never been that great. Like the interface has always been pretty terrible, um, but I'm spoiled idea maker, hands down, best supports ever. Unbelievably good. Um, the interface is always pretty, pretty perfect. So, although it doesn't have tree supports, well, Prusa Slicer or Orca Slicer does have tree supports and tree supports are awesome. Actually, I will show you guys something. What in the, the thing's noisy. We're gonna save this as something uh we'll put it sure we'll just stick it here for now um cube stand we're gonna open up something that i designed last week uh open recent um dust boot where did it go all right, we'll just open that, yeah. Uh, okay. All right, we'll open part. There we go. Uh, let's go to camera three. Or, here we go. <clears throat> this is something I made for work. Um, and this is a dust boot for the spindle on our CNC router at work. And the way this printed was pretty cool. I had tree supports. And although not really necessary, they came all the way up this like chimney here to support this small little angled overhang. And this is just for the vacuum hose to, to, to lock in. Go back to the, how it sits on the spindle. So that's how it looks on the spindle. And you could rotate it any which way. And then of course, inside here, we're gonna, you know, we have a brush that you stick in there. So you get that constant suction. So, but that was a complicated piece to draw. Nah, I think it took me a good four or five hours. So, but looks cool and it printed well. The SIM cab, oh yeah, I can do that. Uh, where'd that go? FS1000 model. Is this it? There. This is a little model flight simulator I did. Um, turn that back on. And uh, all I had was a little die cast, like a little teeny tiny die cast model as a reference um, and pictures. And this is what I came up with. And uh, it turned out really nice. Da, 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 da. Drew, what diameter spindle is that? A uh, 72 millimeter is the main um, 
the where it sticks out that black portion go back to it here ha. I'm assuming you're asking for this diameter here 72 millimeters so it's a 2.2 kilowatt spindle so we'll come back to me boom hey editing and such Kyle says, can conf confirm it's super accurate. It's accurate enough. Um, we have plans on making a big one um, in multiple pieces, and we found little electric actuators that you can control with an Arduino. And so we're going to actually run a, build a program, like build the thing on some little electric actuators and then have a script that runs on an Arduino that will make it move around and such. And so that's, that's a, a project that we're getting into. So obviously very constructive things to do with our new bamboo lab printer. So, but in this, the second day of owning that thing of, of us having that thing at work, it paid for itself like tenfold because I had to make a small little spacer for a button and a TCAS indicator um, to fix it. And yeah, it's like thousands of dollars, if not over $10,000 to send those things in for repairs when we could spend 30 cents on a little bit of plastic. <laughs> so, uh, Kyle Bowes, take my money. I'll print you one. Or I could send you the STL. You could print it for yourself. Let me know. Kevin says, the SIM cabs look great. Donkey Romper, giddy up. What's up, Donkey Romper? That is a great name. I love that. It's terribly inappropriate and it's perfect. What's going on, man? Hope you're doing well. Got our mission. Let's go, let's check on our print. We're 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 running into this hour here very quickly. Actually, we're at an hour, so we're we're probably gonna have to end this soon. Uh, one. There we go. Oh, look at it go. Oh, that's actually getting pretty close. How far along are we? It's got sixteen-ish minutes left. Set. Seventy-five percent. Ever since I've switched to Clipper, my time estimates for um, finish time between what the slicer says and what it thinks has always been off but yeah about six so we'll hang out until it's done how about that everyone hang out for another 15 20 minutes till this is done finish Ed's deal here I know this isn't the most engaging of uh, streams but I do appreciate everyone that has hung out and chatted along with us. <coughs> Excuse me. Man, this cold that, that we got, we got this cold a few months, like a month ago now. And it's just this lingering cough. It's so annoying. So Ray says, speaking of Clipper, the new Sidewinder X4 is supposed to have that. Yeah, so they, they, had, they launched the Sidewinder X3s. So they have like a big one and a small one. Um, and supposedly they run pretty good. I saw a video. Um, Happy 3D Thailand got one, and he's testing it. And it looks nice. The X3 looks nice for a Marlin machine. It's definitely an upgrade from the X2. Um, a lot of people are kind of upset because it doesn't have Clipper, but that's what the X4s are supposed to have. So um, and people are like, they all should have Clipper. And it's, you know, I disagree. I think that giving people an option is a good idea, and, and Artillery has done that. So uh, I would love to get my hands on one. Uh, I lost my contract at our contact at artillery, so I don't know if I can. Um, and I have no idea what's up with their core XY. Um, if they're still working on it or if they scrapped it because they can't compete or who knows. Um, we're 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 doing silly stuff here. Let's see. Ah, uh, boom. Hey, picture in picture. See, I can't edit and talk at the same time. This is what my producer wife is for editing while I talk and jibber jabber on. So but yeah, the Sidewinder X4, um, a Clipper-based Cartesian machine. So a lot of people say that it looks like the Alugu Neptunes, and they kind of do. Um, but, you know, it's not necessarily a copy of the design, but Alugu found something that works, so why not kind of not copy it but imitate? Sure, because for anybody to get upset at artillery for imitating someone else's stuff, like, have you seen all the Ender 3 clones out there? Come on. <laughs> Let's see. 
Ray, anyone? Oh, let's see, Kyle. Anyone here live near a micro center? I went down in Santa Ana a while back. Talk about crazy supply of printers and filming. Yeah, God, I wish. I really wish that we had a micro center here. That would be so nice. Um, but we don't. We have a fries, and you know it's like an hour away, but it's terrible. It's fries has really gone downhill. It's not what it used to be. Um, I don't even know if they're still in business. Actually, if that one closed or not, I haven't been down there in years. So, um, man, I want to go to a micro center. Let's see, Ray, I hear the Core XY is supposed to be out at the end of this month, but they're quiet about it now. Yeah, I have no idea. I haven't heard anything in a couple of months. So. But it's been like it was supposed to be out in April and then May and then August and then September. And it's like, come on, guys, what are you doing? Um, at least give us a teaser like they did for the X3. Um, but they sent out the teasers like a couple weeks before the launch or the pre-ordering for the X3. So who knows? Kyle says they froze. They closed the fries by me. That sucks. See, Donkey Romper, I, I still rocking the big tree pie are on X2 happy with it? I still rocking the, are you saying am I still rocking the big tree tech pie on my X2? So I am rocking it, but I'm rocking it in this now. It's like a standalone deal. So it's inside the machine and I got uh, the big tree tech SPI screen, um, which I'm a little disappointed with the screen. It's kind of slow and it, it doesn't, it's, it's not great. Um, I might find like an HDMI, powered HDMI screen, Pi screen. That might be a little bit better. And maybe go a little bigger because three inches for clipper screen is just not enough space. Or three and a half inches or whatever that is. So, but it works. But 99% of the time you're doing anything from your web interface anyway. So, uh, are you? Yes. Yes, I am, but in that printer. Um, the X2 is going to get configured with the, where did that go? I have a Pad 7, and that's gonna get put on there. Um, when I'm, one of these days, I'll finish this string of videos that I've been trying to work on, um, some review videos. So, and the Pad 7's gonna be part of that. Um, but overall, I like the Pad 7, it's nice. It just kinda works, uh, which is what you want. The um, the Sonic Pad, yes, works, but is significantly more annoying to get working. Um, I suppose if you have a Creality printer, it's easier. Actually, I'm gonna try it. I have a, my producer wife has a coworker. I'm working on his, I gotta get his fixed up, his firmware. The firmware they put on those Ender 3s, these new ones, are horrible. I don't know what they're doing at Creality, but their firmware as of late on all their machines has just been downright awful. Yeah, they're out of their minds. Like, I thought artillery was bad at firmware. No. Creality, way worse. So. But if you, Donkey Romper, if you want to go with the Big Tree Tech Pi for your for running Clipper, absolutely recommend it. It is amazing. Um, it's It works just like a Raspberry Pi, except you just install Big Tree Tech's own um, version of Debian on it. So you're not going to get, like, the, the Raspberry Pi OS. Um, but if you're using it for a 3D printer, you don't care about that. Um, so they've geared it toward 3D printers. And the nice thing is that you can power it over USB-C or 24 volts directly from your power supply inside the printer, which that's what I have going on there. So you don't have to worry about running a separate little brick or something like that. It's amazing. Um, and it just, and it works. It's a runner. And with my big fat fan I put in that box, it's running at a whopping 35 degrees Celsius. So it's got a nice big heat sink on it for that. Donkey Romper, yes, yes. It, it's, yeah. And the, the documentation that Big Tree Tech has for it is pretty decent too. You can get, it, you can get through and get, get started and working pretty easily. So it just runs their, their CB1, um, chip so a linux type soc so kevin if i gave you dimensions would you be able to print scales for knife handles sure i can do that kevin uh donkey Rumper, should i get any of their add-ons uh, what kind of add-ons what kind of add-ons do you want Um, and how far? We're almost done. 
Let's check this out. Oh, it's printing. So this is about as fast as I've ever, the fastest I've ever printed a silk filament and it's laying it down pretty nice. So it's a Hatchbox blue silk. Um, it's, it's good. Kevin says, awesome. Yeah, just send me the dimensions, Kevin. And um, I can help you out with that. So waiting on a response from Donkey Romper. What add-ons do you need for your pie? Oh man. 10 minutes left on the print. We will, we will end the stream when the print is done and I show it off to you guys. And then um, I got another thing to print later that's gonna take probably a good day or so to send off to a fan. Boop, 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 boop. This is the, the after hour show, the past four o'clock show. Um, for those of you that have been hanging out for the majority of this time, thank you. We appreciate it. I appreciate it. This is just more of a hangout stream, I guess. Hang out and chill. Uh, donkey room. The plug ins. Um. I don't really, unless you're going to run like a U2C, if you're going to run CAN bus, yeah, you got to get the U2C thing and then all that stuff. But if you just want to run straight Clipper, no, you don't need any plugins. You just install the, um, the Debian. And I recommend doing the, so they have a minimal and then they have one with Clipper and mainsail pre-installed. And I recommend just going with the minimal and using Clipper installer and update helper, Kiowa, to install your Clipper fresh from scratch. Um, that way you get, you know, an up-to-date version of Clipper on there and you could put whatever main cell fluid, whatever you want on there without any issues. On the the pre-installed version, it puts main sail in a, in a weird location, in a weird directory. So if you want to switch over to fluid, it gets really angry and confused. Um, I helped Kyle with this a while back. Um, so... I just recommend doing the minimal and going through the whole install process as if it's a Pi. So the only difference with it is that you install Big Tree Tech's software or their, their firmware for it or their, their OS. And then there is a configuration file that you put in your Wi-Fi information. And then once you do that, you could SSH into it and install everything identically to how you do it on a regular Raspberry Pi. And it operates exactly the same. And then you just plug it into the USB output on the deal to your main board, your, <coughs> excuse me, for the printer and, um, and it works. So let's, it's been running, running off of a $30 Big Tree Tech Pi. So, Donkey Romper, like the canvas, sorry driving. Oh yeah, can't wait. Kyle says it's working great now, super happy with it. So you're rocking on your Hornet still, good. Drew got to run. See you later, Drew. Thanks for stopping by. Happy Canadian Thanksgiving. Um, have a leftover turkey leg on, not on me. Have a leftover turkey leg for me. Mm. Ray says, have a good night. We're about eight minutes from this thing printing, finishing. So if you want to hang out, sure. If you don't, you don't. Hmm. I know you all probably have better things to do than listen to me rant and rave. We'll, we'll play cube while we wait for this to finish. Because I'm all solid works out. I don't know what else to show. Doing a tutorial live is tough, especially when I don't have like a goal. I plan on doing some solid works tutorial videos, but they're going to be heavily edited and um, scripted out. And I'll have like a, a lesson plan for it. So. So we're just gonna play play Rubik's Cube for the next eight or so minutes till this is done. <laughs> do, 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 do. Where's the blue and orange edge piece? Nowhere to be found. Blue and red, blue and red, blue and red. Ah. So I'll do like this and then I want to do that like 
this. We got the worst part of that the install was trying to figure out that it wanted my local network. I thought it was creating a private network, but it was to be broadcast. No, no, no. Yeah. So it's, it's a device connected to your local network. That's all. Kevin, I don't want to get back to work. Then don't. What are you guys doing today? Hopefully everything's not hitting the fan. Ooh, blue, orange, blue, orange. Bueller. Oh. So I could do that. And then... Ooh, boom, 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 boom. Red, green. And then... Huh. All done. PMs. Ah, you could finish them tomorrow. I mean, you technically have all week, right? Well, till Wednesday. Yeah, five people still hanging out. Amazing, guys. Like I said, this is the after hour show. We're just waiting for the 3D printer to get done. So I'm gonna sit here and play Rubik's Cube and chit chat and we'll do, we'll do, we'll do nothing together until you guys don't want to do it anymore. Uh, worst stream ever. And then, uh, let's see, how did that go? He go, do, do, do. Oh, I messed it up. There. Uh, always tomorrow. Yep. Don't forget to lovingly caress the like button. Yes. Liketh the like button. Dinner wasn't ready. I'm back now. All right. <laughs> There's never a better time for dinner to not be ready than to come hang out with us. Because this is the most chill place on YouTube right now. Billions of people on YouTube, but this is the best stream going. And uh, the four of you currently on right now, are, you know what's up. Five minutes remaining. So, for those of you who like fluid, uh, let's see. Camera three, is that three? Yeah. Check it out. I have a EP3D themed interface for Fluid and same for Mainsail. Um, download links for this in the video description. Check it out. Look at it go. Last little bits. <laughs> Kevin, I need to go buy a cube now. Um, get well, it depends on your budget. What's your budget, Kevin? Let's see. It's more of a podcast for me. I'm working in the shop making some cutting boards. Ooh, fun. I would love to do a cool, like, glue-up cutting board. I, man, woodworking is a lot of fun. Like, metalworking's great, but woodwork, something about woodworking is more like, I don't know, graceful. It's a lot of fun. Carpentry in general is a lot of fun. I wish I could do more of it. I wish I had more space so I could have, like, the wood shop, the metal shop, the 3D printing shop. No limit. Oh, man. I mean, you can get a GAN cube. Get, get that GAN 14. It's like an $80, $90 Rubik's cube. It's great, though. Um, but in all reality, um, the, the Moyu RS3M 2021 Maglev is a good start, and they're like 12 or 13 bucks. Um, and then the sky's the limit. But stick with Moyu or GAN. Um, who else? Chi, QI, they're okay. So, let's see. I have all the tools for working, woodworking, if you need anything. Oh, Kevin, that's a mighty nice offer. Um, I have a few things. I have table saw, chop saw, and whatnot, but I don't have, like, 
a router or any of that stuff or a joiner or a planer. So. Kyle Bowes just got me a nice 1800 square foot shop. Oh, that's a good size shop. I'm jealous. Print your own. Print your own 3D cube. So that is something I'm going to do. I'm going to 3D print, design and 3D print one of these and use it in a competition. So it's just gotta be WCA compliant. So there's an actual <laughs> like professional organization for cubing. That's a weird thing like the PGA or whatever. Um, and there's rules and such. So nothing says it can't be 3D printed. It just has to comply with all the all their stuff. Three minutes. This has been a long eight minutes for this last part of the print. Kevin, very jealous. Yeah, 1,800 square feet is a decent sized shop. What's my shop size there? What is that? It's like a one car garage is my shop area. It gets the job done, but I wish I did have more space. Drew, I'll send you a photo on Facebook if you want to show the class. Sure, send it on over. Show the class. What do we got? Oh yeah, yeah, you, sh you showed me this earlier. This is super cool. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. So this is this cutting board that Drew is working on. It's a little mushroom from Super Mario. I like it because it's, you know, pixel art with wood. It's perfect. <laughs> it's so appropriate. Let's see. Uh, you'll have a finished photo next week. Yeah, finish it up. Let us know. Back to two. In here. And then, Kyle, those fluid themes get real long towards the end. I wonder if there's a way to tune it. You, could, you can customize the theme and change where things are at and stuff like that. I know mainsail is significantly more customizable for the themes, so it's just what you, what you prefer. So, um, but yeah, you could change how it's laid out and like where things are and you could disable certain things. So um, I haven't messed with this, um, this installation of fluid on this machine really yet, um, but typically I go through and I move some panels around and I only show the, um, the macros that I actually use, because it will show your start macros and all that stuff because it's still a macro. I don't need that as a button on there. Um, but things like leveling and all that stuff, it's nice to have. So, uh, time. Did I read that wrong? Am I stupid? Those fluid times. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I didn't read that right. I can't see apparently. Um, yeah, I'm, there's got to be way. I know in Prusa Slicer you can tune some of that, but I don't, I don't know. It's a little bit off, and it's the same thing in mainsail. It's just what Clipper sees out of the file, and it estimates how long it's going to take, and so something in the slicer's got to tell it, and as it gets closer to the end, they kind of sync together. Um, never had issues with it um, with Idea Maker and Marlin. I was always within a few seconds. It was always really, really good. So um, there's probably some tuning or magic sauce in there that you got to do. Um, I know Drew, Drew was messing with that, weren't you, Drew? Getting your times to match up. So we're, we're on the last couple of layers here. We are, we are on the last layer. What? We'll watch it finish. Uh, camera two, no, one, boom. Let's, lo let's watch it finish the last layer here. Yes, Drew says, let the class know how to tune the time, how to figure that out. If it's a Prusa slicer thing, it probably can be done in Orca slicer since it's just a fork. Oh, there is a time adjustment. It's in the printer section in Super Slicer, I think. Okay, to tink, dig around in, uh, in the what settings? In the printer section. Oh. Mm. Basic information. 
Gco, let's see, let's search. There is a search feature. Time. Advanced on a lot of time, purge, maximum e jerk speed. Nope. Uh, yeah, I'll have to dig in there more. I'm learning Orca Slicer. I, I have to know how to use it since we have the, the Bamboo Lab printer at work. Uh, where were we here? All right. Done, done, da da da. So let's, uh, let's pop this off of here and see how it looks. Oh. Whoa. Fancy, fancy. Turn that off now. That looks good. Starfleet Command. The cool thing though, so I wish I had a third camera. The, there is, for the brim options, they have a mouse ear option, which, let's see if I can, nah, I can't, that camera's out of focus. Basically, it knows where sharp corners are that would potentially peel up, and it gives you a mouse ear, and you can tell it how big to make it, which is amazing, because I didn't want to put a full brim around this thing, just the mouse ear. So, we'll let her cool off, and then we'll, we'll pop it off of here in a minute. Let's see. All right. It's so satisfying. Boom. Bottom looks a little weird. Bottom might have been a little close. Kapow. A Starfleet Command coaster for your coffee cup. Or water bottle. So this is going to get shipped to Ed the old tech guy. Oh. I'm getting a phone call. I'll have to call him back later. And that is that. Uh, great stream, Matt. See you Wednesday. Yeah, I got to get off here. I think uh, someone's calling me from work. I'll have to call them back. But <clears throat> yeah, this has gone on for way too long. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out and watching. I really appreciate it. Um, I know this is kind of a, a silly, low-key, just kind of hangout session. A little bit of SolarWorks, a little bit of 3D printer stuff, some sci-fi. But... Uh, I don't know what we're going to do next week because it's still going to be a solo stream next week. So send me your ideas on um, different social media. Follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, all that kind of stuff at Ethereal Project 3D. Um, Kyle, talk soon, fun stream. Yep. So, but it's time for me to, to get out of here, clean all this mess up. I got to get some dinner started and all that stuff. Um, so thank you all for watching. Happy 3D printing, and we will see you in the next one. Uh, Beta black? Hmm.